We have to stop the schools opening. It's so important. Everyone will get really sick. I think I'm really scared to go back to school. If the government tries to reopen schools before it's safe, I think they'll find very fast that they've dramatically underestimated how powerful the instinct is for parents to protect their children. There's absolutely no way I'll be sending my son to school anytime soon. The idea of schools reopening now is absolutely terrifying. Um, I, I doubt that anybody who is talking about it or reporting it as a good thing has ever been in a school because you, you need to spend five minutes in the school to know that children can't socially distance. Um, they can't do it physically and they can't do it mentally. You know, children need contact, they need to play together, they need to be close to their teacher so they can learn from them. They need advice, they need support, they need nurture. There is absolutely no way that schools can safely open. You can social distance at 1.5 metres, but it's been two for the last six weeks. Why has it changed? We're also told you shouldn't have contact longer than 15 minutes. I don't know if you've ever been in the classroom, but most lessons go on a lot longer than 15 minutes. Being back at school, any way they want to do it is going to be extremely difficult to socially distance. And, you know, aside from being away from each other for so long. How do you make a three-year-old socially distance from their friends? How do you stop them from touching? Fingers in mouths, you're touching every kid. When they go toilet, they're not supervised. Toilets are dirty. Look how much nits is transmitted in schools, you know. You get one child in a class with nits and within a day they've all got it. You're moving around small shared spaces, corridors. You go into a classroom, you push the set, everybody pushes the same door. Work surfaces, pens, pencils. It's, it's just not workable. In primary schools, you know, there's all the logistics of how do you get the children from the outside, literally the, the outside gate into, you know, their classroom. How many people are we going to allow onto um, the school site? I know children don't get it as bad as grown-ups, but they could spread it to all their parents at home because their parents could be really old or have a problem with their heart so they could get it really badly and die and then the child might not have anyone to look after them and that would be really sad wouldn't it? My primary school age child is eight. He has autism, ADHD and global sensory processing disorder. If he gets in a situation where um, a meltdown is triggered or he feels upset or angry or frustrated in any, in any way, those instructions that he's been given about um, maintaining a two metre distance or washing hands just goes completely out the window. Never mind the safety of people around him. Kids that have autism, they don't do well with change. How are you going to make a child with autism, say, or autistic, whatever? Can you wear this mask? There's lots of children in special schools who are doubly incontinent, who require two members of staff to change them and, and, and clean them. They're not even being offered uh, protective equipment. So my mum works in um, a special needs school. So she's now down to go to two days a week because she's got lupus, diabetes, blood pressure. So it's a big worry and she's 60 as well, 62. She's a cleaner in a school. So yeah, it's a big worry because she's got to be there morning and then in the afternoon with kids around. We've got all the teaching staff um, and we all have lunch at the same time. The catering staff work in a small confined space in a canteen. There's an office, which is a small space and all the office staff have to work together. We can't maintain social distancing. In Tower Hamlets, we have very high populations of low income families, very high population of Bain, um, black minority ethnic families. Then we know that those families are at much greater risk. And I, I want to work with children and I want to go back into my job but I don't want to put anybody at risk, least of all those vulnerable families. The level of institutional racism that affects communities in so many ways has just been so blatant. Hackney has got the third highest death rate. It's important that as we get back to educating young people, we do think about how the inequalities and the disproportionalities play out. If kids go back to school, then the lockdown has ended and it's going to be a disaster. Was the second wave of the 1918 so-called Spanish flu more deadly than the first after the restrictions were lifted? Yes.
We have to keep the schools closed, we have to keep people safe. The people that I'm looking after you know, are the most vulnerable to this infection. If we lift the, the lockdown too soon, it puts them at risk you know, of serious infections and of dying. What has this all been for if we, if we lift the, the lockdown too soon? If we'd had a, a proper lockdown from the beginning, then we'd be able to get back to normal a lot quicker, as we're seeing other countries do now. This pandemic is clearly still out of control with too many new infections with too much virus in our community. I just want to quote something that my nurse colleagues have put on Facebook today, which is the end of stay at home orders doesn't mean the pandemic is over. It means currently they have room for you in the ITU. We're paying a, a huge price for the mistakes of this government um, in delaying lockdown, failing to test and contact trace, failing to provide PPE. The National Education Union has been putting questions to the government and these are not being answered. There is no plan in place. I don't think it should be down to like um, individual schools to be making particular decisions. There should be like a, a, like a universal application of safe, safeguarding the mechanisms that have been agreed and that are in place. If the government is relying on an app to track and trace COVID-19, we're, we're going to be missing from that data because we just simply can't do it. People under the age of 16 can't have the app and they can't carry a mobile phone. As teachers, we're not meant to have our phones switched on in the day. But at the moment, I just don't have any confidence sending my kids back, you know, whilst the situation is the way it is. And I'll be exercising, you know, my rights as a parent. I also don't think parents should get penalised for it. I hope there ain't going to be fines for it because you're only trying to protect your child. The strength that we have, all of us stand together and say, we're not going back through those school gates until you can guarantee us, guarantee us that our children and the people who work with them are going to be safe. We need all the parents in all the schools to basically step forward and say we're not taking our children into school at the moment because it's not safe. I totally support a boycott on the 1st of June, absolutely. If the government isn't going to protect us, we'll protect ourselves. We'll stand firm as parents and as teachers and as communities and there'll be no return to school until it's safe.